Hey everyone, my name is Dave. Welcome to NTD Racing. We just got back from the Baja 1000 and, and what caused the end of our race was our axle. And there was two different things and I'll just make two different videos about it. One was we snapped some axle shafts. That will be in the next video. I talked about how I'm going to replace the 14 bolt axles with some cut to length axles from Yukon. But today we also bent our axle. We bent the tube here for the axle shaft. So how did we do that? And what did I do wrong in the design? This was all on me. Um, when I built the truss for this thing, this is all quarter inch plate that's in here. And there's some pieces in here to make this rigid, but I stopped it, you know, short uh, this length right here because the my bump stops were gonna land right about here. And I didn't want the truss to continue on. I wanted the bump stops to land basically on the tube because I, overestimated the strength of these tubes and I thought that they could resist the bump stops and all the loads that were going to happen and that is absolutely not the truth um, and so we have an issue we've got a bent tube this side over here is maybe just slightly bent this side over here is really bent and um, here's what I got I got my angle cube and this thing is really cool they're super handy this thing will give you degrees down to the hundredths of an inch um, and so I can, I can turn this thing on and I'm going to put it here on the tube. I'll, I'll face it this way, just so you can kind of see what I was doing earlier, but I set this thing to zero and it magnets itself to the tube. And once I go from here and I slide over here, uh, I can't see it right now, but I'm guessing that it reads about 1.7 degrees of difference. So there was between these two points, there's a one and almost one and a half slightly more degrees of bend in this tube is, is one and a half degrees of bend a big deal well here's why it is there is a thing that we used to use in the aviation world when i was a when i used to teach my students this and it's called the 60 to 1 rule and it has to do with degrees and distance and so if you take a distance and let's say you you make an error in flying by one degree and you you fly 60 miles and you're one degree off when you get to your desk at the end of the 60 miles, you're going to be one mile off of wherever you're going. So you can just extrapolate that into inches. So let's just say you have 60 inches, one degrees, you're going to be one inch off. Or if you have 30 inches and you're almost two degrees off, you're one inch off. And you can imagine what that is doing to the shaft as, as it's going through there. It's going into our spool, creating all kinds of loads. Basically, we've got to fix it because the 60 to 1 rule tells us we're putting a lot of loads on our axle shafts, which already want to break anyway with all the things that we're doing with bigger tires, bigger gears and spools and those kinds of things. So, so how are we going to fix it? Well, I guess if it doesn't work, you'll never see this video, but if it works, I will show you the whole thing. This is what I'm going to do. One of the big errors that people make when they're welding, especially really big things and making really long welding runs is they're not patient. They don't let the metals cool down and become equal temperatures and all those kinds of things. And what you'll find is that over, you know, a long welding run, you'll find the, the um, whatever you're welding starts to bend, you know, it, it starts moving and it always moves. Like when you're welding a roll cage together, you'll find that even though everything fits up perfectly, once you start welding it, things move around a little bit. And that is an error that welders make. And I made it uh, also, but today we're going to intentionally make that error. So what I have here, this is, basically what you would make a trailer hitch out of. This is two inch by two inch square tube. It's got one quarter inch wall. And we're gonna use it for two different reasons. One is we're gonna basically gonna take this and put it in my Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. And it's gonna make you want one because it's gonna cut this thing like butter into two separate halves. So you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that would take me forever with an angle grinder. And I'm gonna do it in a couple seconds on the plasma table. But we're gonna go ahead and cut this into basically channels they'll be one inch tall by two inches wide and then there'll be quarter inch plate on the outside and that's going to do two things one it's going to strengthen the tube because now we're going to move on both sides one additional inch out from this i think it's a four inch tube so now to be six, six six inches wide or an i-beam that's six inches wide with a quarter inch plate on both sides which is going to be incredibly strong or at least a lot more stronger than this not as strong as if i had done the truss right the first time but at least i'll get this thing through i think at least one more race and then two is what we're going to do is i'm going to cut it to the exact length that i want here to weld it onto I'm going to weld it right over where I think the bend is. I'm going to get it, you know, put on there with some pretty nice weld, pretty good welds. That's going to heat up this tube. It's going to heat up that tube. But then I'm going to get some map gas. I'm going to heat the crap out of this, this tube right here, this 
you know, quarter inch tube. I'm gonna heat that, I'm gonna let the other tube stay cold. What that's gonna do, hopefully, is it is gonna make that tube, ex you know, extend. It's gonna basically get longer because it's getting hotter. Um, and then I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna weld it all the way on both sides. And what will happen is, since this tube is so big, it'll soak up the heat better, it's gonna stay colder. This tube, I'm gonna keep it with map gas and everything. I'm gonna keep it as hot as I can get it. And this tube's gonna stay long and then once, once I'm done welding and it's all together, then this tube is gonna to want to contract. And this tube's gonna to wanna to stay the same length. This one is gonna put a massive amount of force on that and hopefully bring it back to mostly straight. And if I can get it within about a half a degree, I'll be happy. But anyway, let's go ahead over to the plasma table. Let's cut this thing in half and start welding it on this tube. All right, so this is the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. And I'm gonna affiliate with them if you, are interested in one of these tables, then check out the link in the description below or code NTD Racing will save you some bucks on this. But anyway, what we're gonna use is fire control. What you normally see me do on my videos, so I use Fusion 360 to generate G-code, to put into fire control, and then cut something out on the plasma table. But what people don't realize is that the fire control can create a cut file without any program going into it. And we need to make a straight cut. So you see, I have that tube set in there and I spent a little bit of time making sure that it was in, you know, in line with the gantry so it's going to make a straight cut what i'm going to do is i want to go down here and i'm going to tell this thing i want to make a straight cut so i'm going to click on straight cut and it brings up this these options here which direction i want it to cut i wanted to cut in the x axis and i wanted to go from left to right and so that should be correct there the cut length it's a 28 inch piece of metal i'm just going to tell it to cut to 29 inches and then it'll just basically will stop cutting once it gets off the, it'll sense that there's no more arc and it'll turn the, the plasma cutter off on all on its own as far as the cut speed goes i cut quarter inch plate at 55 inches per minute um, i want initial height sensing on so it's going to go down there and it's going to figure out where the metal is before it starts cutting so that it can use also torch height control and use voltage to make sure that the torch cutting height is consistent the whole way across. And then as far as pierce delays, I use a 0.3 second pierce delay when I'm cutting quarter inch plate. Pretty much everything else I use 0.2, but for quarter inch plate, I do use a 0.3 uh, second pierce delay. And then I'm gonna generate the code. And there it is. Now it tells me that it's ready to go. All I need to do is hit start, put on my safety glasses and let it rip. Man, I was feeling so cool when I said that <laughs> rip. What a dork. Anyway, um, I had the power on my plasma cutter set for aluminum. So it was like half power. Now I'm back to full power. It should work this time. And the way that I knew it wasn't going right is that the I could see the sparks flying out everywhere and it, the torch was not penetrating the metal. So I stopped it as quick as I could. So I'll have to grind off a little bit of mess there. But anyway, let's let it rip. All right, check out that cut. There is your machine cut off of a torch, perfectly straight. I think it's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead, there's a little bit of mill scale, that's what's left behind by any plasma cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and use my angle grinder and a flap disc, and I'm gonna go ahead and take that off so it's ready to go ahead and TIG weld. I'm gonna also use this uh, magnetic chuck to hold these in place while I grind them. If you think any of these tools are cool, check out the link in the description below. That's also how we make money, is through our Amazon store, and if you Want one of these for Christmas? It's time to tell your wife. Okay, time to make some science happen here. I got this thing clamped on here. What I'm gonna do first is come in here. I'm gonna put a tack weld on both sides. Then I get rid of this plastic clamp before I melt that thing down. I'll put a longer weld in right over the bend. Then we we'll get the map of gas out. We're gonna heat this thing up like crazy. Try not to heat this thing up so much. We're gonna run a weld all the way across, see what happens. So I'll be going in time-lapse so you don't have to watch the whole thing real time. We'll see what it looks like when we're done. Well, I 
honestly cannot believe that that worked. This, here's the weld I put on there. You can kind of see I haven't heard any cracking. And I wouldn't expect to because it isn't like we're welding to cast. We're welding just still to still or mouth still to mouth still. An extruded tube, if you will. And uh, let's get our angle cue back over here. And I'm going to put it here. I'm going to zero it out. There's zero. I'm going to slide it over here. And now we're at 0 0.7, something like that, 0.7 degrees. That's a lot closer. That's a whole degree has been taken out of that bend. All right, quick walk around to show you what we did. We got this thing all spray painted up. I spun it around. You can see a little bit of dirt coming out here. There will be dirt coming out of this thing forever from Mexico. And yeah, I, maybe I painted over a little bit of dirt. I don't know but I think it looks pretty good. And then to put the brake lines back on over here in the back. Let's talk about the results of the fixes that I did. Uh, here's what I ended up putting on. You kind of see I put some perches here for where the bump stops are gonna land. Uh, there's a tube on top, tube on bottom. And what that does is it basically, you know, spreads out where the moment is gonna be distributed across this whole thing. I think it makes this tube just a whole lot stronger. So, you know, as the bump stop lands here, it's gonna dissipate the load here. I think it's gonna put a little bit into the, the original truss. It's gonna send it across this tube and it's just not gonna focus all of it right where it was before and giving us some cracks and those kinds of things. This is a good, I think, uh, quick fix. I think that the real fix would have been just to get a whole new axle, put a whole new truss on it. And I kind of plan on doing that before the Baja 1000, but this is our plan for mint. Let's talk about how it worked. Uh, basically on the bottom, I think it worked perfect. You know, where I heated up this tube, I left this tube cold. This one got to like 500 degrees. This one stayed about 160 as I was welding. So it, it did a really good job. It took out a whole degree of bend in there. And I think I could, it was about 0.7 degrees of bend left. And I put this one on and I basically just kind of welded that one on there. And I think that I could have done a better job with this one had I welded now the or heated up the round tube and just spent some time getting that hot and then slapped this one on and welded it on there cold, I think it would have taken the rest of that bend out. Uh, as it is, there is a little bit of bend left. And I, you know, I'm gonna check out, I'm getting some more axles in the mail here uh, from a buddy in a couple days. And I'm gonna put it up and I'm gonna see, you know, do all axles have a little bit of bend or is it just the ones <laughs> that I use on the, in my race truck? So that'll be a good data point. And then we're gonna go ahead and throw some new axle shafts in this thing and we'll test it out. If it blows up, I'll be the first one to tell you. Well, the science worked. It did take the bend out. I think it's good to get you out of a bind if you just need to fix your axle temporarily while well, maybe you're getting a whole new axle or something like that. So it, it does work and we'll see how long, if it makes it through mint, maybe it will go all the way to the Baja 1000 again for us uh, next year. Anyway, uh, next on this one, putting the axle shafts in, that'll be the next video that you see on our channel. Hopefully you got something out of this one and you might consider hitting that like and subscribe below. It sure helps us out. We do appreciate it. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Take care of yourself.